Hey everybody, um, Eric here. Got another really good question. There's a bunch of them today, so this is actually really engaging. It's awesome. I'm glad folks are you know trying to learn, and you know I'm I'm happy to help. So the question is wrapped around you know what is short interest float, and how can we use it to help us inform our investing decisions? Great question. So first and foremost. Short interest float, short shares, short interest, short float, all of it is synonymous. So when we're having this conversation, I likely will flow in between all of them, um, but it's essentially, it all means the same thing. And what it means is, it's how many shares have been sold short. So as most folks know and familiar, you can buy stock. Normally when you buy stock, you, you want it to appreciate in value so that you can sell higher. So buy low, sell high. There is an entire other side of stock transactions where people can sell short, where they typically do that in a bearish sentiment, where they think it's going to go down. So in that instance, what they do is they don't own any shares to start. They borrow shares from a broker, and they tell the broker, I owe you X number of shares, however many they borrowed. And then what that investor would do is immediately sell those shares. So technically, they would have negative X number of shares after they sell the shares because they need to recoup those shares at some point to give back to the broker. So what they want is to sell them at a high price and then buy them back at a low price and then as soon as they get those shares back, they just give them to the broker and say, here you go, thanks for letting me borrow these. And then that's the trade. So inverse to traditional stock investing, they sell high and then buy low. So the reason why we like to you know, take a look at short interest float is because it helps us identify sentiment in the market. And the reason being is if you see a certain stock that has a ton of shares, um, short shares, there's a good chance that a lot of institutional investors who do a lot of research on this stuff, it's their jobs, are identifying this as something that they feel is going to decrease. I never, you know, um, promulgate the herd mentality, just follow kind of mindset, but we can use it as an indicator to add to the rest of our toolkit. So if we're looking at something, we're like, eh, you know, this one looks a little weird. It might come down. And then all of a sudden you see that there's a really, really large number of short shares. That can be, you know, a tool that you use, including with your thought process. So there's a couple ways it can be expressed. First, just a general number of shares. More often than not, what's more helpful is when you see it expressed as a percentage. And to get that percentage, you know, pretty simply just take the number of short shares and then divide it by the shares outstanding. And that'll give you, you know, 20% of outstanding shares are short. You know, something like that, just to give you an idea of, you know, the size. A couple of the things that I think are worth discussing, the short interest ratio is, it's a good one to follow. And the reason being, um, it's also known as the days to cover ratio, and the calculation is short interest divided by the average daily volume. So as you could probably infer from the calculation, what this is telling you is how many days it take it would take on a how many average days it would take for shorts to cover their position. So for example, if there's a product that has you know an average daily volume of 10 million shares, and then there's 5 million shares that are sold short over that over an average day you can close all those shorts. All those shorts would have enough volume to close. However, in that same, same scenario, if we have 10 million average daily shares and then there's 40 million in short interest, that means that it would take at least four days for them to cover all of their short positions. That can be a problem if the market is running up and people are trying to get out of these positions from the short side you can see a lot of flight to quality, people just you know, just trying to get the heck out of these positions um, and it can create volatility. So that's an interesting one to follow. If you see a, you know, a big disparity in that ratio, it's something I like to watch. The last piece, I'm sure you've heard of it in some capacity at some point, is the good old squeeze. It's also known as the short squeeze. 
what this is is when you have a bunch of people that shorted a position, remember, when you short, you want it to go down. However, if you short and it continues up and continues up and continues up, at some point, you once you hit your risk profile, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, hit my risk, time to sell, in this case, time to buy, time to close the position is what it means. So if they, you know, sold at $50 and it keeps going up, keeps going up, now it's at 70 and they're like, okay, I got to buy this back. I know it's going to be a $20 loss of share, but I got to get out of this thing. And then all of a sudden, a couple days later, once all those shorts get out, then the market normalizes, it comes back down. It's a short squeeze. So it's a temporary increase or decrease, depending on if it's a short squeeze or bull squeeze. Um, but it's a temporary move in the price that normalizes shortly thereafter. Now, on the short side, it can it can absolutely be a good opportunity for um, for bullish investors if there's a large short interest float. And most people are like, how how can that be? If you know you're just telling me that it could mean that there's a lot of bearish sentiment and professionals think it's going to go down goes back to what I say all the time. Nobody knows what the hell is going to happen. Nobody knows. We have people who it's their explicit job to try to, you know, analyze different underlyings and, you know, come out with a hypothesis on direction, and they're wrong all the time. So it comes, it's a 50-50 chance. So the reason why it can be an opportunity, risky, but can be, is because, again, that similar squeeze scenario, if all of a sudden there's no pullback and all these shorts are trying to cover their positions. Remember, how do you cover a short position? You have to buy stock. So whenever we buy stock, we're increasing demand. Demand increases, price increases, exactly. So it's just, if a bunch of shorts start trying to cover their positions, they're buying a bunch of stock, which is gonna drive price up. So if you're bullish, and you th and you see a trend continue, you know, to the upside, it could be a good investment because there's a chance that the shorts will end up wanting to get out and then driving the price up if enough of them start to do so. So that's what short interest float is, a couple actionable items from an investing perspective on how we can, you know, use this to inform some of our decision making. I would never use any of this as the basis for a trade. But I do use a lot of this information to assist in, you know, my trade gener generation ideas. Um, it's a tool in the toolkit. It's not, you know, the end all be all. So hope this is helpful. I'll catch you guys later.